All right, so uh, let's have a continuation of uh, uh, where we ended. So we've looked, uh, looking at respiratory system examination, we've looked at uh, general inspection, under general inspection, just a preview, we look at uh, uh, treatment cues, you look at general body uh, build up, you look at uh, 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 nutrition or, or uh, uh, nutrition or hydration status, you look at respiration, okay, uh, such as, but when on the respiratory, uh, respiratory rate, we'll look at it uh, a bit later, and then uh, you can also look at uh, uh, the general health status of the patient. That's one thing probably I didn't mention. The general health status, that, does the patient look ill or does, uh, do they look uh, are not ill, okay? So you don't want also, uh, if you know whether the patient looks very ill or not, it will make you have an idea of how exactly to handle the patient, okay? So all those are very important uh, things uh, that you should uh, take note of. Okay, so now let's look at examination of uh, the hands, all right? Examination of the hands. Now, so we look at the hands. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going systematically, okay, uh, how you are supposed to approach the patient and what you start with, what follows, and so on, all right? Uh, that's how you're supposed to uh, go about uh, some of these things, at least, it's, uh, if you go st stepwise, it's going to help you uh, in uh, uh, remembering what exactly you're supposed to do, how to go about certain things and so on. Okay, so let's look at the hands, right? Number one, what you want to look at is, uh, and, uh, on the hands you want to look at uh, 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 things such as finger clubbing, okay? Finger clubbing, okay? Finger clubbing, fingers that go to the club. Sorry, it's not that, I'm just joking. Okay. So now, finger clubbing, uh, the pathophysiology of uh, finger clubbing is, is something that is uh, uh, quite complex and not well understood, but uh, it is attributed to things like uh, hypoxia, severe hypoxia, all right? Uh, deprivation of uh, uh, oxygen to the digits, to the terminal ends of uh, the digits. And then that is going to lead basically to uh, 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 more proliferation of uh, the tissue, the, the, the soft tissues uh, uh, on the, at the ends of the digits, right? So uh, what are some of the things that can cause uh, finger clubbing, okay? So finger clubbing can be caused by many things, including uh, lung cancer, okay, lung cancer, things like mesotheliomas, okay, lung abscess, empyema, cystic fibrosis, TB, okay, and so on and so on and so forth. So there are a number of things, as far as the respiratory system is concerned, there are quite a number of things that can cause, uh, uh, that can cause uh, 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 this uh, finger clubbing, okay? Now, let's look at uh, grading, all right? Grading of finger clubbing. We need to know that there are four grades of what? I mean, there are five uh, 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 grades of uh, finger clubbing. Now, the first grade, Basically, you will not really be able to tell much uh, if there's any difference, okay, uh, uh, if there's any finger clubbing. However, uh, when you look at, uh, remember there's what is called uh, the nail bed. The nail bed is uh, just uh, uh, at where the, the nail ends, okay. Uh, I hope that uh, you're able to see on my camera. So where the nail ends and then uh, uh, just the skin uh, next to where the nail uh, ends there. So. That part, that, that top part here, that's what is called the nail bed. Now, this nail bed is supposed to, it's not supposed to be too hard, again, it's not supposed to be too, uh, too soft, all right? Now, if they, it becomes too soft and there's increased uh, fluctuation of that part, okay, such that if you're doing like that, then there's increased fluctuation, then we say that that is uh, 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 finger clubbing grade one, okay? Now, I really wish that there was someone here that I could demonstrate that on, so usually what happens uh, in, 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 a, in a clinical setup, you get the, 
uh, finger of the, of the patient and then you hold it like that. So imagine this black part that is, uh, that is uh, uh, there's this part and then uh, the black part. So there's this part and then there's this other part. So you hold uh, the nail bed, all right? And then you try to, uh, to shake it, kind of shake it like that, all right? And then if you see that this increased fluctuation is shaking too, uh, too much, more than it should, then uh, probably that is uh, 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 grade one, okay? So that is uh, what is called, so grade one, here we're saying that there's increased fluctuation of the nail bit. Okay, there's increased fluctuation of the nail bit. Then grade two. Grade two now, what we know is that uh, if uh, this is the nail, okay, let me not make it too curved. Uh, if that is the nail, and then you have the finger like that, and so on, and then uh, we're going to have uh, something like that, right? We're going to have something like that. So uh, that is the nail, okay? Now, there's this angle here. So this is a finger. Okay, so there's this angle. So you can see that uh, the nail goes, let me try to use uh, red ink. So, this is black. So the nail goes like that, and then the nail bed also goes like that, okay? So what we need to understand is that this angle is supposed to be less than 180 degrees, okay? It's supposed to be less than that. But obviously it should be more than, uh, more than uh, 120 degrees, okay? At least less than uh, uh, 180 degrees, but at least uh, greater than 120 degrees. So at least something in that range, right? So once this part, it begins to become almost straight here, such that it begins, the, the nail bed angle is lost, okay? The loss of this nail bed angle is what is called uh, finger clubbing grade two, okay? So you find that uh, if you look at uh, this part, so how do you check that? You just look at uh, the finger of the patient and then you're going to see that it's almost flat there. This nail bed angle is no longer there. So that is what is called uh, finger clubbing grade two, okay? So loss of nail bed angle is what is called uh, a finger clubbing grade two. Okay, then grade three. What is finger club in grade three? Now, you find that, uh, remember from the diagram that I drew, the nail, is, uh, the nail is supposed to be caved quite well, it's supposed to be caved, but not too caved, okay? It, it's not supposed to be too caved, all right? And then the nail bed also goes like that, and then that is uh, the rest of the finger and so on, okay? So at least something like that. Now, you find a situation where the nail bed is lost such that we are at uh, finger clubbing grade, grade two. So we have something like that. And then uh, the nail bed is, is, is lost as well. And then you have something like that such that it's almost, almost straight. Okay. Then, as if that is, in, uh, that is not enough, okay, as if that is not enough, we find a situation where uh, this nail makes a huge cave, okay? It makes a huge cave. It makes a cave like that, okay? It makes a cave. So when you look at that, if the, if the nail is too caved than normal, that is what is called uh, a finger clubbing grade three, okay? Increased curvature of the nail. Increased curvature, so in grade three, we have increased increased curvature of the nail. Okay. Then grade four. Okay. So grade four, what does it mean? Grade four, it means that uh, 
there's, there's, there's a lot of soft tissue on the tips of the fingers. There's a lot of soft tissue such that it becomes bulged. It's bulging, right? As if it's swollen, as if the fingers are swollen, okay? And that is, uh, 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 that, uh, that appearance is described as, uh, as what? As in, uh, 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 drumstick, okay? Drumstick appearance. Okay, appearance of the nails, I mean of the fingers. Okay, drumstick appearance of what? Of the fingers, that is what is called uh, uh, finger clubbing grade what? Grade four, okay. Now, is anyone able to tell me what uh, finger clubbing grade uh, five is? Anyone? Okay, now, uh, this one also occurs, it may be an independent, uh, an independent, uh, um, uh, an independent uh, pathology, especially in musculoskeletal system, okay? Um, where you, you, where you find that, uh, uh, at the, on the wrist, on the wrist here, okay, you find that it becomes tender, okay, it becomes swollen and, and tender, okay, so that is, uh, th that is where you find, so even when you are examining, okay, when you're examining the patient, you look for all those other things, and then you also check on the wrist there, you find that, uh, uh, it's tender and, uh, kind of swollen then you're going to probably know that there is a finger clubbing uh, grade what? Uh, grade five, okay. Now, that is, uh, that is called, uh, let me uh, try to raise on top here. All right, then uh, uh, what else? From finger clubbing, you can look at, uh, uh, you can look at uh, um, cyanosis, okay? So that is number two, cyanosis. Now here we are talking about peripheral cyanosis. Okay, peripheral cyanosis. Now, when you talk of uh, uh, cyanosis, you are simply talking about uh, a bluish uh, discoloration. Okay, of the skin, all right, or the mucous membranes. Okay, uh, a bluish discoloration of the skin or the mucous uh, membranes. Now, what are the causes of cyanosis? Now, one of the causes of cyanosis is any cause, any cause that is of peripheral cyanosis, any cause of central cyanosis. Okay, and here most of the times we look at uh, uh, CVS problems and uh, CNS. Uh, problems, okay. Most of the times when you're talking about central cyanosis, it's CVS, and however, what else can cause uh, peripheral cyanosis? Okay, usually uh, when you have uh, that uh, 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 cyanosis, it simply means there is hypoperfusion. Okay, there is hypoperfusion of 
uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, the peripheries. In this case, of uh, 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 of the of the of, of the digits. Okay, there's hypoperfusion. Now, this can this can happen in cold weather. Okay, in cold weather or anything else that is causing vasoconstriction. Okay. Anything that is causing vasoconstriction can also cause uh, this. Uh, uh, uh. Then also in, uh, in uh, severe hemorrhage. Okay. Severe hemorrhage. You can also find uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, cyanosis. Okay, then from there, uh, other than cyanosis, you can also look at uh, number three, you can look at temperature. Okay, you can look at temperature. So you feel the, the hands of the patient, all right? You feel the hands of the patient, not just one, but both of them. You, co you have to compare. You may find sometimes that one of the hands is, is warmer than the other, okay? So you have to feel, uh, is the patient febrile or a febrile, okay? So for example, in, uh, if the patient is cold, if, they, uh, in, if the hands of the patient uh, are cold, it may happen in things like uh, hemorrhage. If there's hemorrhage or even vasoconstriction, uh, all those are such that there is hyperperfusion of the hands. Uh, anything that is causing hyperperfusion, can cause uh, the, 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 the hands of the patient to be uh, quite cold. If the hands are febrile, they are warm, it can happen in things uh, uh, like, uh, uh, of course, we are restricting ourselves to respiratory system. However, in things like uh, uh, thyrotoxicosis, okay? Thyrotoxicosis, okay? Uh, or in infection, in cases of infection, all right? Uh, such as pneumonia, in this case, we're talking about a uh, respiratory system such, such as pneumonia or lung abscess, all those uh, infections can uh, result in um, warm hand, uh, uh, hands of uh, the patient. Okay, then other than temperature, what can you look at? Other than temperature, you also look at um, number four, you can look at, I uh, uh, look at, uh, 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 can look at um, um, pulse, okay? Look at pulse. Now, when you look when you're looking at pulse, we'll discuss uh, 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 this uh, better, uh, probably as an independent uh, 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 topic on its own, or under the the cardiovascular system, okay? However, under pulse, you look at the rate, okay? You look at the rate. And as you are doing this, as you are checking the pulse, now remember here talking about radio pulse, by the way, it's radio pulse. As you are checking the pulse, at the same time, you can also count the respiratory rate, okay? Respiratory rate. Now, pulse, you look at the rate, which is supposed to be between uh, 60 to 100 uh, uh, beats per minute, all right? Then respiratory rate, it varies. Uh, from uh, about uh, 12 uh, to around uh, 16 uh, a bit per min uh, a breath per minute, uh, depending on also the, the sex, okay, and the age of the patient. But in those ranges, that's where you find a uh, respiratory rate. So as you are checking your pulse, probably at the same time, you can also uh, check the respiratory rate, okay? Uh, and um, so you're looking at the rate, you also look at the volume, okay? You look at the character, okay. Uh, those are some of the things that uh, you look at under uh, uh, under pulse. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to discuss uh, a bit more details about uh, about pulse and what are some of the abnormalities that we can look at uh, when you're looking at uh, pulse. Okay, so looking at, uh, going to look at all those uh, further under uh, cardiovascular system. Okay, then. Uh, other than that, uh, other than this, you can also look at, uh, uh, this is uh, number five, you can look at pala. okay? When you look at pala, here simply talking about uh, uh, the, the hands, 
uh, becoming whitish as if there's no blood okay as if there's no blood so here uh, what can cause uh, pala obviously anemia all right anemia is the commonest cause of uh, of pala okay it's the commonest cause of pala so the hands uh, are looking quite whitish and uh, and so on now obviously that can go uh, hand in hand with a situation where the hands are also a fibra or they are quite cold and so on then the other thing that we can also look at number six uh, on the hands you also look at uh, tustens okay tustens this is very very important tustens now you know how uh, smokers hold uh, uh, the cigarette they hold cigarette like this right and they're smoking feeling nice okay not knowing that they're reducing their number of years by smoking so smokers they hold the uh, the cigarette like that so you go to their hands and then you look in between those uh, two fingers you're going to find uh, some discoloration be becoming sort of darkish uh, 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 in those in those uh, fingers becoming kind of dark in between there where they hold uh, the cigarette okay so that is uh, those are called tustens so this is obviously found in uh, smokers okay in the smokers especially chronic especially chronic smokers if i smoke only for one day just today you don't expect to find uh tustens there if i smoke only for a week you don't expect to find tustens i smoke for a month you don't expect to find uh, tustens okay so unless i i smoke for a very long uh, a long time over a long period of time you are likely very likely to find uh, tustens on my fingers okay then other than that, we also look for what are called uh, tremors. Okay, uh, tremors. Now, what are tremors? Now, a tremor is simply a sort of a failure to hold uh, a, a, a tone. Okay, failure to hold a tone. Um, now, there are four types, basically four types of tremors, but for the purposes of this discussion under respiratory uh, 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 under respiratory uh, uh, examination, we're going to look at uh, uh, two types of uh, tremors, okay? Now, we have what are called uh, uh, fine tremors, okay? Fine tremors, what you do is you tell the patient to stretch forth their hands like that, they stretch forth their hands, and then you observe, all right? Now, fine tremors, what is going to happen is that, especially if you observe over a period of about uh, one minute or so, uh, you find that you're going to, um, and they're going to start shaking like that they'll be shaking okay so that those are called uh, fine tremors sometimes what may also be preferred is let me just try to look for a piece of paper um let's see let's see if i have something that we can use okay great sometimes what can also be done what you can also prefer you get a piece of paper let's say plain paper and then you put on top of their hands so that they're able to observe nicely okay i hope i'm not having fine tremors so you will find that they're going to they'll start shaking like that okay to, to they'll start shaking those are called fine tremors so uh, so now uh, here we have what are called fine tremors all right now, these fine tremors are found in a situation where someone is taking a bitter agonist, okay? Such as uh, salbutamol. All right, a bitter agonist such as salbutamol, and also in cases where someone uh, uh, is also having, uh, uh, taking uh, like uh, uh, bronchodilators, in other words. Then we also have uh, this is well like i said we're only going to talk about uh, basically uh, two but uh, four types then the other type is what are called uh, flapping tremors okay flapping tremors what do you do you tell the patient to stretch their hands okay and then they uh, uh they, they, they 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 make an angle like that all right so they do something like that and then you observe the patient over a period of maybe one minute or two minutes or probably three minutes you may be able to observe now what is going to start happening is 
they are going to see as if the patient the patient wants wants to become a bed. They are going to start uh, flapping like that. They can't hold it like that. It starts uh, flapping. That's why it's called uh, flapping uh, tremors. Okay. Now, uh, where do we see uh, these kinds of tremors? When do we see these kinds of tremors? Uh, mostly, uh, it's an indication of end end organ damage. Okay, end organ damage. For example, in cases of uh, severe severe respiratory respiratory failure. Okay, in cases of severe respiratory failure, in cases of uh, uh, carbon dioxide retention. Okay, all these are going to give you uh, what are called flapping tremors. Okay, flapping tremors. Now. The, basically, those are some of the things that you can look at uh, uh, when you're looking at uh, the hands, okay? Those are things that you look at uh, under the hands, on the hands. So, uh, I've mentioned, uh, we, we talked about uh, finger clubbing, we've talked about things like uh, 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 temperature, we've talked about things like pallor, we've talked about pulse, we've talked about uh, 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 tastens, we've talked about tremors. And then we've also talked about um, uh, uh, what else? What else did I mention? Um, yeah. So those are things that you look at uh, when you're looking at uh, uh, the hands. You're examining a patient for the respiratory system on the hands. Okay. So I'm going to end this video right here as well, and then we proceed uh, to other parts of uh, of the examination.